Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. This time we're going to be talking about Growl on the Sega Genesis. Have you ever wanted to kill poachers? Have you ever wanted to kill poachers while fighting alongside other animals? Well, then this is your chance. The story in Growl is not really all that amazing or anything, and it doesn't need to be. It is just you picking one of four park rangers and then going out and brutally murdering poachers. And sometimes you save the animals that the poachers have captured and they help you kill all of the evil poachers. So you kill these poachers with just a whole bunch of weapons that you probably shouldn't have as a park ranger. You know, like rocket launchers and AK-47s, but... I've never been a park ranger where an army of poachers have invaded the park that I'm supposed to be protecting. In many ways, this feels a little bit like NARC, but not with, you know, drugs or anything like that. There are also a few cutscenes in the game that add a little bit more to it, and some dialogue that gets thrown in. But the dialogue is at the bottom of the screen, so you can miss it if you're not really paying attention to it. Most of the time, I wondered why my character was just standing there, and that kind of cued me into, oh, the story is being explained to me, so maybe I should look down for it. It isn't anything special, but in 1991 and 1990, it didn't really matter. Players weren't going to the arcades for the stories in these games, they were going there to beat the crap out of people, and that is what Growl let you do. The gameplay isn't anything amazing either. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up that is okay. I think it would be better if you could find the arcade port of this, because the home console port is kind of bad, and in some ways is vastly inferior to the, to the arcades, especially since this is single-player only, which is a pretty big disappointment. Like every beat-em-up, the, the controls are very simple. A is your attack button, B is your jump, and C is your special attack. This three-button setup is used in several beat-em-ups, and it works quite well here. There are four possible characters, each of them have their own stats, so there's a little bit of a difference that you can have when you try to play this game. If you want to try to beat it with one character, you can do that, or you can swap between them after your character dies. You get three continues, and then you have to start over. This is similar to other arcade game ports, but it's a little annoying in my opinion. There were two difficulty settings, uh, normal and hard. You can also adjust the number of credits from three to seven. Like many beat-em-ups, you got a bunch of weapons that you can use. Uh, the guns and rocket launchers have limited ammo, and that's kind of a good thing because you don't want to have somebody running around just mowing people down with an AK-47. That wouldn't make the game all that much fun. Or it would make it less hard than it really is. The melee weapons seem to be just this infinite use thing, so if you pick one up and you're able to hold on to it, it didn't seem like it would go away or break or something like that. If you dropped it, they would disappear after a little while, but once you got a hold of the whip, you could just keep whipping people until, you know, you eventually got hit by something. The weapons in the game are a rocket launcher, an AK-47, a pistol, grenade, sword, knife, pipe, and a whip. The whip was my favorite out of all of them. The grenade I found to be more frustrating than anything, because you throw it, then your character drops down and waits for it to explode. And oftentimes, this gave the enemies enough time to just avoid the grenade, making it kind of useless in my opinion. You can also pick up boxes and boulders and barrels and throw those at people. And those are kind of just one-time use weapons, and then they'll 
release something like extra points or health items or even other weapons that you can use, which is pretty awesome. The game throws a ton of enemies at you, and it was almost unfair at times. It isn't uncommon to see 8-10 to enemies on the screen simultaneously, which is pretty impressive for the Sega Genesis, but really goddamn annoying for this game because it feels like you're just getting ganged up upon and you have no hope of actually winning. At times, Growl really just seems unfair because of the number of enemies. You're going to be given ways to deal with them in some form, like you might get a rocket launcher or a grenade, and those can really decimate the enemies if you're able to get them to land. Or you might find one of the animal friends that you are going to need to release along the way, and they can just lay waste to the enemies. Especially if you manage to save the elephants, they just destroy anything in their path, and it's pretty awesome to watch. Because the game is all about killing poachers, at times you save captured animals. And these will either help you during the stage, or at times they'll help you during the boss fights, which are desperately needed because the boss fights can be very challenging. It's another part of this game that feels almost unfair until you figure out what the pattern the bo- what pattern the boss is actually using. It's great when you have these animals because you can just kind of avoid the boss and let the animals do a lot of the heavy lifting. But that feels a little weird to me. Like, I, I want to keep fighting this boss and figure out how the game expects me to beat it. But, yeah, it it's, it's overly complicated in those boss fights. Like other beat-em-up games, Growl has a special attack, as I mentioned earlier. This is really useful when you're surrounded by enemies and you need to get out of trouble. But, like many other beat-em-ups from this era your special attack is going to cost you some health. I don't really like this. I would have preferred just having a limited number of special attacks, but it's something you just kind of get used to when you play a beat-em-up on the home console. You're going to end up getting screwed for using your special attack. Overall, the gameplay is pretty good. Like many beat-em-ups, it can get a little bit repetitive, and you only really need to keep punching people in the face. So, yeah, you're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. The game does get really annoying with the number of enemies it throws at you, and the boss fights can feel a little bit unfair. I was playing on normal, so I don't even want to know what it's like on hard mode. The visuals are okay for the time. They can be impressive in some instances, like when something blows up. That's pretty cool looking. And some of the character sprites can be pretty detailed. The enemies are going to just largely be palette swaps, but they do look pretty detailed for what they are. And you get some pretty impressive things, like when the animals are attacking your opponents, when you run into some of the boss characters, they're pretty big and well detailed. And the backgrounds and the environments that you're moving through look pretty good. The graphics did take a bit of a hit when this was coming from the arcades to the home console, but that's kind of to be expected. Nothing in this era looked arcade perfect when it was brought to the home console, especially if it was a uh, late uh, 80s release. It just wasn't in the cards for this to look exactly like the arcade game. Overall, the game looks pretty good. It isn't anything special, and I don't think it's really going to blow anyone away with its graphics, and there are some minor problems that really aren't worth mentioning. I think Growl is a decent port of the arcade game, and despite the graphics not looking arcade perfect, it looks pretty good for the home console. So what do I like and not like about this game? I like that it's an easy beat-em-up to pick up and play. It's got decent graphics and decent gameplay. But at times it can feel just a little bit unpolished. 
it honestly feels a little bit unfair in some cases, where you have to deal with a large number of enemies, and the fact that it's only one player really hampers what you can do. If it was two player, then the number of enemies would make more sense, but it just feels that it can be a bit a bit unfair to the player at times. And despite the weapons that they give you, it can feel a little bit repetitive. And, yeah, they throw way too many enemies at you, as I mentioned. And yeah, Overall, it's a decent game, but it's got some problems that would kind of keep me from recommending it to people. Growl is an okay beat-em-up, and it has some issues that are keeping it from being, you know, one of the games that I would recommend. The biggest issue being single-player only. It's just kind of ridiculous to have a beat-em-up that does that. The gameplay also has a few issues. Like You're going to be fighting way too many enemies at once, and you're often not going to have what you need in order to win those fights. And then having just a limited number of continues, even if you can bring it up to seven, is kind of annoying. I wish games would just let you continue from where you first died, but yeah, that's not, that's just not how video games were done back then. It's kind of an annoying thing looking at now, but I don't ever remember really caring about it back in the 80s. I really wanted to like this game. It isn't all bad, and I think it can be a pretty fun game to play. But yeah, it just it has a few issues that just really make the game annoying. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.